Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. I'm Mark Stein, Thrive founder and your podcast host. We're creating sustainable, inclusive, and multi-generational residential communities from repurposed big box stores or other unused buildings. By offering unique and ecological co-living options, our aim is to combat the epidemic of isolation, revitalize communities, and help others discover the many benefits of engaged community living. In this podcast series, join us as we discuss co-living and other aspects of our concept, in addition to bringing you interesting people who are doing cool things from around the world. Through this podcast, learn more about our concept and see how Thrive Co-Living Communities will bring together people from all walks of life. To find more about us, visit www.thrivecolivingcommunities.org. Thanks for watching and enjoy the podcast. So hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Thrive Co-Living uh, podcast. On Let's start over again. Hi, everybody. Welcome back and welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. Always a mouthful. Uh, glad to have you here. And I have Paula Kayser returning today, but we're reversing roles. You know, now that we're moving beyond just the issues and features of Thrive, we're looking into things, business ideas, things that people are passionate about, people that have expertise. So we're just moving into what we will do when we have our physical facility and bring in cool and interesting people to share their passions and, and interests. And if Paula looks familiar to you, she was in a uh, recent podcast on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So she's agreed to turn the tables. I have a passion that I have wanted to share. And so she's going to question me about my passion, which is Tesla and all things Tesla and Elon Musk. So Paula, welcome back, and thanks for reversing roles with me. It may be a little uncomfortable for me at first, but I'm sure I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, warm up to it. Uh, I'm I'm very happy to be here with you, Mark, and I know you do have passion around this topic, so I'm anxious to dive in with you. Great. Well, I'll leave it up to you. Yeah. So um, something that interests me a lot. Uh, you know, we all know the stories about, uh, say, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and how those uh, mega companies started under these individuals. Um, obviously, Tesla is a mega company. So can you tell us a little history of Elon Musk and, and um, you know, what was his upbringing and, and how does that provide the launch into running one of the greatest companies in the U.S. at this current time? So, yes, thank you. Uh, Elon Musk um, is a serial entrepreneur, and he hit it big early. He's from South Africa, moved to the U.S. Uh, like a lot of um, people, went to uh, college for a while, and um, uh, I believe well, I'm, I'm not really sure, uh, sure about that. And, and let me just say, I am not, I am, do not claim to be an expert about him. I'm, I follow him. I watch podcasts uh, daily, but I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, so I don't, uh, don't hold me to all the, all the facts. But anyway, his, his first major company was PayPal. And they revolutionized the payment industry. Uh, and still are. Um, he sold uh, that and had several other smaller startups. He sold his first um, piece of technology. It was a game uh, and made a good bit of money there. Um, and then he, he had plenty um, to work on and decided, was really working to try to focus on what problems he wanted to solve. So he spent some time doing that, and he decided that um, hastening the 
uh, pace and speed of adoption of renewable energy was one of his passions and a major passion. And then also making uh, hum Earth humanity a multi-planetary species was another passion, uh, specifically to have a mission to Mars. So he, he does have some other companies, but those were the first that he, that he focused on. Um, he did not start Tesla. There were two other guys, Eberhard, I uh, can't remember the name of the other one, that started Tesla. They brought him in as an advisor and as a funding source, and he fairly quickly um, took over, actually, and, um, and forced the other two out. Um, and many, if not most, say that he, he saved the company and, and made the company. Um, so that's the origins that I'm aware of. All right. So uh, how many companies does Elon Musk run or, or head at this point in time? Uh, he is the CEO of four companies simultaneously. So Tesla, SpaceX, the Boring Company, which I love the name of that. That's the, the tunneling company. Um, uh, and, and I'll tell a little more about that. I need to make a note on that. Uh, and then Neuralink which is a uh, brain computer interface. And I can talk a little bit about that at the end too. Yeah, so I like to break down each one of those things or a little bit about them. But you know, uh, one of our primary focuses here is Tesla itself. Um, can you tell me what year Tesla started and um, how the process has kind of uh, formed you know, at first they were very, very expensive. Now they're a little less expensive. Um, as most technology does, it, it tends to get less expensive to capture as a citizen or regular old person out there. Can you speak to those things a little? Yes, I'm not exactly oh. sure of the start date. I believe it's somewhere around 2002, 2004. Um, so they started with the Roadster which was a very expensive sports car and very low production numbers um, as proof of concept. And yes, you know, like a lot of these companies do, they start with something very expensive. It was hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, but he got, a, he got a good number of celebrities um, and, and other wealthy people who, uh, who pre-bought these vehicles. So that was the first one. Then um, I believe it was the S, the Model S that was next. Uh, it could have been the X. Um, the S is a sedan. And I just recently heard, because they had a, uh, an event yesterday uh, with a refresh of the Model S, uh, and that was two, 2009, no, no. Um, I think around 2009, um, so over 10 years ago. Um, so that was a sedan. And then the Model X around either around or before that time, uh, which is an SUV, it's the one with the gull wings mm -hmm. uh, inspired by De the DeLorean. And um, it's proven to, to be kind of a, a pain in the ass. The doors will open automatically when people when the owner gets nearby and if they're parked in a garage, <laughs> then these gold wings are opening up and uh, hitting the sides of the garage, all sorts of problems there. Um, so, but his, his, again, his goal and mission and everything that you see or hear about regarding Tesla is about speeding the adoption towards renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, he knew that he needed to, continue to bring the price down so that anybody could afford it. So he started working on the Model 3. And the Model 3, I think that was 2014 that it was first launched, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and it was at uh, $35,000. It's now at 39000 
um, and it brought him closer to a vehicle that anyone could afford. I believe the average vehicle price is around 41,000 um, for all types of, of cars, probably not SUVs, um, or, or excuse me, not trucks. And um, so that got him closer. Uh, then uh, I'll just take you on through the, the timeline. Then um, last year they released the Model Y, which is, they say, they call it an SUV, but if you see it on the road, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between that and the three. It's, it's a little taller and sort of has a, a, an egg hump on the top, uh, but it is the size of an SUV. And he predicts that that will be the best selling car uh, of all type, of all classes. It's not much different from the price of the Model 3 and offers a lot more, lot more space. The release yesterday was, uh, he calls it the Model S Plaid. Um, and he mentioned the, the movie that that was taken from, some screwball comedy, I can't remember. Um, but the Plaid uh, is the fastest production car ever made. They broke the um, zero to 60 in less than two seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll show some video here of people's reaction in the Model 3. This is not the, the Model S, but uh, it goes, it's about three seconds for the Model 3. And I haven't, I haven't been in one. There's a, there's a button that you can push that will automatically take you without having to accelerate yourself will take you from zero to 60 and seeing the reaction, uh, you know, it's like a, like a spaceship taking off. <laughs> so, um, and it did a quarter mile in, I don't remember the time, but it's the fastest production car ever made and comparable to uh, roadsters and sports cars that are in the millions of dollars. Uh, this one is a hundred and ten thousand dollars, not cheap, but for what it does, um, uh, and and it's got great range on it. I believe it's four hundred and ten miles of range without having to charge it. Yeah. Um, interesting, interesting information. I'm glad that uh, the, one of the goals is to make these vehicles affordable that means access for everyone and that uh, is going to be a game changer I think on the world stage and uh, producing the result of um, more efficiency and um, you know uh, energy savings that we'll see um, now tell me a little more about other initiatives. I know that they're looking at full driving features self-driving features they're also, uh, the cyber truck is coming uh, available very soon, and then um, shipping and major transportation is going to make a shift in seeing Tesla vehicles, the big over-the-road trucking vehicles. Is that true? Right. Yes. Well, let me let me fill in one last gap on the affordability uh, topic because they have one, and they they don't speak much about it. Um, the enthusiasts refer to it as a Model 2, and it's reportedly to be a $25,000 vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, probably not including full self-driving or autonomy, but the basic vehicle uh, will be right around that price. And by the time that comes out, there will be full self-driving, and most, if not all of those, will not have a steering wheel and will not have brakes and accelerator. Um, they'll be in uh, a robo taxi network and I'll talk a little more about that. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, um, the, the next vehicle to come out is to be the Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. And if you miss the launch event of the Cybertruck, you really need to to uh, look at that, I'll put the the uh, YouTube uh, 
URL in the show notes. Uh, they bring this thing out and an, uh, one high level executive brings out a sledgehammer to show how durable this stainless steel truck is. And he hits it several times on the door. And then they want to show the bulletproof glass. And he takes a couple of ball bearings, huge grapefruit sized ball bearings and hurls them at the windows. And twice in a row, they break. So, um, after an Elon Musk just sort of brushed it off. He said, oh, we'll fix that in post-production. Uh, I don't know if it was of the video, post-production of the video or post-production of the truck, but it was really, it was really funny. Report, supposedly it was that they had, uh, when they hit the door, they uh, weakened the glass uh, or maybe cracked the glass and that's why it shattered. But anyway, so the Cybertruck is like nothing we've ever seen. It looks like a space vehicle. Um, it's made out of the same uh, or similar grade stainless steel as they use for the rockets in SpaceX, at SpaceX. It is uh, a unique construction in that it is a unibody molded um, or cast uh, piece, the whole body, except for the doors, is one piece in a giant, um, it's not cast, uh, I'll think of the term in a minute, but uh, it's a huge machine that makes this whole body in, in one press. Um, and then it's put onto the frame. So it's, it's revolutionary in its design and in its construction and definitely uh, quickens the process. Because it's stainless steel, it also will not be painted. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and it's virtually indestructible um, as they showed with that sledgehammer. The, the design has been very divisive. People either hate it or love it. Um, I was intrigued by it at first and I have pre-ordered five cyber trucks. So, uh, and if anybody's still interested, um, or if anybody's interested, you can pre-order with a hundred dollar refundable deposit. And when the time comes, you can either buy it and resell it, um, or uh, you can step up and buy it, or you can just pass and get your money back. So I have one of the dual motor uh, cyber trucks ordered, which is due to be start production at the end of this year to be delivered probably by mid-year 2022. And then the, I've ordered four of the single motors that probably won't be here until, be delivered until mid-year 2023. So I'm really curious, why would one want five Cybertrucks? Yeah, I probably sh should have started with <laughs> autonomous driving and full, full or full self-driving. So Tesla is very close to solving full self-driving, and that is a fully autonomous vehicle that you will not have to drive at all. Um, I'll put some videos in here and some links uh, so that you can see how it works. Um, it started out just with uh, some of the defensive driving features that many upscale vehicles have, um, lane change, uh, accident avoidance, and that sort of thing. And then it moved to uh, interstate driving and uh, autonomy there. And now they are, uh, they have stop signs, left turns. Um, it is, it's really close. They're working on uh, the outlying sorts of issues. And there are a lot of issues um, small issues that can cause a lot of problems. So, um, but it's going to, it's going to just totally revolutionize the way that we get around. And um, if you see it uh, in some of these videos that I'll be showing, that I'm showing, it's, it's 
is truly incredible. And they are very, very close. Um, it knows uh, the difference between uh, a box and a dog in the road. Um, it uh, works at night. It works in rainy conditions. Uh, and there are some amazing demos out there. Uh, they are probably three years ahead of any other company, including Waymo, who's been working, uh, the division of Google, that's been working on it for a long time. Yeah. So, and that currently costs $10,000. So, and the Cybertruck is at $39,000, which is the same price as uh, the Model 3, uh, plus $10,000 for full self-driving. If you reserve the Cybertruck now or at any time, it freezes the price. It locks you into the price for full self-driving. Mm -hmm. Now, they will have a subscription for people that don't want to pay it up front, um, but reportedly at about $100 to $150 a month. But buying it and financing it up front is probably the most cost-effective way uh, that you can get it. So... To your question, why buy five cyber trucks? Mm -hmm. um, Tesla will have an app, um, and they're referring to the whole genre as robo taxis. So they will have an app where you can submit your car, just like Airbnb um, or not, not um, Uber. Uh, Turo is a car yeah. rental mm -hmm. site where you can rent put your car out there for people to rent. Um, so you'll be able to put your, uh, any autonomous vehicle into any Tesla into the network. Tesla will take 25 to 30%, but they'll be lining up the fares and you put it in and you just say what hours you want it to, to uh, be in service there. So you could drive it to work, let the car drop you off then put it into service in the robo net, taxi network and off it goes until you're ready to be picked up in the afternoon. Wow. So it'll, it'll pick up fares. Reportedly the, the price will be about $1 a mile. Um, and it, the anticipated expense is about including charging is about 20 cents a mile. So that's the anticipated margin. And I believe that, Lyft and Uber are at $3 a mile. So you're cutting the price by a third because you don't have a driver and you have a vehicle that's going to last for 1 million miles. The battery is, is uh, reportedly going to be a, a million mile battery. So this is a, a purely business move for you. Yes. Um, Yes, and I'm, I'm approaching retirement, uh, thoughts on retirement, so it, it can be an alternate source of income. Mm -hmm. it, they will drive themselves to, to recharge. Yep. Uh, so really, the only thing you'll have to do is make sure it's cleaned out. Yeah. Well, that sounds interesting. Um, so my mind went to, uh, during the middle there, you mentioned a competitor. Can you speak to competitors in the marketplace to Tesla? Um, there, there are starting to be some, and uh, each of the major companies uh, are putting something out this year. Uh, Ford came out with the Mustang Mach something, Mach E, I believe, and then also the F-150. Um, by the way, in the Cybertruck ads, they have a, uh, it is much more powerful than the, the gas-powered F-150, and they have video of a tug of war between them and the Tesla is winning and pulling the F-150 uphill in a tug of war. Um, so, and all the major companies, Volkswagen, BMW, they're all coming out with their first uh, effort at EVs. Now the Chevy Bolt has been out for a while um, and, and one other, uh, but anyway, and then um, I'll have to think on, there's one competitor um, in the new vehicle or the, the new auto companies um, 
that's coming on that has a, a truck, but none of them are set to go into production uh, at least until next year. So they're all behind and none of them uh, have anything to show for full self-driving, though they will be electric. Yeah. Well, one more follow-up question here. Oh, I, I mentioned it earlier, but we've kind of scooted it aside. What about uh, transportation and shipping, like uh, large commercial vehicles? And how's that landscape looking going forward? Yes, um, Tesla's due to release a semi or start production of the semi at the end of this year, which is when the Cybertruck is entering production. They've been battery constrained. Uh, that's the major challenge really of all these EV companies is having enough batteries. So that has delayed the beginnings of the Cybertruck. Um, I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the semi, but the semi it will also be fully autonomous um, shortly after release. Uh, they will also travel in convoys so that you have a driver uh, at the beginning, you'll have a driver in the front one and then several autonomous ones trailing behind. Um, they are also going to last a million miles and I don't remember the exact price. It was around, it was in the low hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they are certainly cost effective. Um, they'll be able to uh, fairly soon drive, go without a driver, charge when they are at each point, each endpoint, um, and sometimes in between for long haul. But um, it's going to revolutionize trucking and we're, we're looking at the last generation of truckers um, with this. Mm. I'll mention too that um, transportation, all forms of transportation represent about 25% of total energy use. And the other, and 40% is heating and air conditioning, which I'll talk about in a little bit with Tesla Energy. Yeah, okay. So I think we've hashed out a lot on uh, Tesla and the advances going there. So let's jump over to uh, Neuralink. Can we, can we, can you unpack that a little for us? Tell us what Neuralink is and why everyone should put this on the radar and, and, and learn about what this company is doing. Well, um, if I may, let me jump in because we haven't finished with Tesla yet. Oh, okay. Um, there's still yeah. a lot, a lot more that Tesla's offering. Okay. And uh, if I may, let me let me back up and talk a little bit about my interest in it, um, in Tesla, mm -hmm. and and also with investing. I have I have not uh, in my lifetime been enthused enough with a company to follow them or to invest in them before Tesla. Um, I had index funds. Uh, they were green funds, so uh, trying to do my part in reducing the, the the footprint, my footprint, and the companies I support. But I I really didn't have any companies that that grabbed me until Tesla, and um, you know most investor investment advisors urge you not to put all your eggs in one basket. True. Um, and I have put 90% of my retirement into Tesla. Um, and first of all, I started investing um, and moving some of my existing portfolio into Tesla in March of last year. And although it's been pretty flat and even dropped some this year, uh, it's over uh, twice what I started with. So it's gone 2x in a year. Um, by the way, I'll give a disclaimer. I'm not giving inv investment advice. Don't listen to anything I say. And proof of that is that in the recession, I sold at the very bottom and held out and didn't get back into the market until it was maybe a third of the way back. So um, I had terrible 
uh, <laughs> experiences and, uh, and, and did just what you're not supposed to do. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But um, I had never encountered a company that, A, had the, this kind of mission that dovetails with my mission um, on energy efficiency. Um, but then the more I researched it, and I started doing a deep dive during the, the pandemic when other people were taking classes, I just focused on Tesla and, and what he's doing. So um, Tesla is a, several companies essentially rolled into one. Um, so there are so many things that they are doing. And if only a few of them hit, uh, they're, they're still going to be wildly profitable. The auto, the auto um, part alone, uh, Elon is estimating that they will grow at or around 50% a year um, in terms of production until 2030. Um, so, and they, they did it last year for the first time. They doubled their production and output. So let me go into some other things that they're doing. So okay. they, are, they are heavily into battery production, mm -hmm. um, creation, design, and production. So they realized that they couldn't depend on LG and some of their partners to build them out of their problem um, on, on battery constraints. So they have been building their own and designing their own. By the way, uh, every piece of their batteries can be recycled every uh they can break mm. it down to its its basic parts and um and recycle every bit of it so the next one um is energy so uh they've been building solar electric panels and what they call a power wall which is a battery storage unit um to store that energy and about four years ago, they developed a, a solar roof. So it's glass, uh, a hardened glass shingle that looks similar to shingles on a house. And they fully roof uh, a house with this. The price is, is expensive, but it is equal to the price of re-roofing a house with traditional shingles plus the solar panels. So if you were going to go solar, with a, with a, on your roof, it's the same price as both of those combined. Uh, payback is around 20 years and mm -hmm. a house with energy efficient appliances can be 100% self, energy self-sufficient with the solar roof and the power walls. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's what he's looking to do, not only charge the vehicle, uh, but to be able to provide all of the home's needs and sell some back to the utility companies, some energy back to the utility companies. Um, and then they're also building it at scale, utility scale. So they're building um, power, essentially power plants with power walls, solar and wind um, going into those. Uh, to, so they, they will be competing with utilities and they've got several quite a few projects out there with the model so, go ahead so these are not these are not um independent companies these are under the tesla umbrella yes correct yeah. they started as two companies solar city and tesla bought them bought solar city maybe five years ago and combined it okay um so we're going to have utility grade power generation Mm -hmm. um, in regions, and gosh, I wish I could remember the number of uh, these utilities that were needed, but it's it's much smaller than you would think. I'll see if I can find that. Have you firsthand looked at a house that has these shingles in place that are capable of capturing power? No. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I'm wondering uh, what the availability is uh, and um, when it's going to be widespread. You know, like when will people around the country be able to access this technology and actually have it installed? And then my mind also goes to Mark: is is there a um, 
expertise level that the installer needs to have? Will these people be trained? And how will we find the individuals who are capable of um, putting the, the panels on the roof as um, you know, functioning and, and doing a good job like it should? Yeah, well, they're for sale now um, all over the country. Um, and it's on Tesla's website. So if you go to tesla.com, you can order, uh, begin to order. It's got to be sized. <clears throat> and that has been uh, cost and driving costs down is one constraint. But the other constraint is having enough trained installers because it is, it's not just like hammering shingles, nailing shingles on a roof for sure. Um, so uh, it has been slow. The development uh, has been really slow. But they're now, um, they're now just starting to get some momentum. Uh, it's about, you know, for a ranch house, I, uh, it's about $60,000 for the roof. So it's not cheap. Um, but a younger couple uh, can definitely get payback early, um, uh, within 20 years, let's say. Um, and there was something else in your question. Uh, Oh, there, there are quite a few uh, YouTube videos about just Google Tesla roof YouTube, and they'll, they can talk about, the, they talk about the economics of it, and they show them. It doesn't look like a, a shingled roof, but it's, it's comparable. And um, they're warranted for 20 years, and Elon Musk in one of the recent um, uh, events said that most houses will collapse, um, not because of the weight of the roof, but that the roof will survive much longer than the rest of the house will. Oh, interesting. And then you mentioned uh, the excess energy being sold back to the power grid. Um, that would seem like there would need to be a lot of infrastructure change on behalf of power companies and so i'm wondering how quickly that adoption will take place as well well some states that are more progressive on this are already buying back uh energy from people that generate it um so <clears throat> it's certain states that that are amenable to it um and the power companies inside those states and certain ones are not uh, but tesla just like they've developed the all of the technology down to the chips uh, in full self-driving, they've also developed all of the technology to uh, handle this. And um, it's, a, it's a form of energy arbitrage um, where uh, you can, you're putting power into the batteries during the sunny parts of the day Mm -hmm. and selling it, selling that expensive power back to the utility companies and then drawing most of your needs uh, from the battery late at night. So mm -hmm. it's going to, uh, it's called net metering and, um, and will enable people to make money and to also use their Tesla to store mm -hmm. energy that they'll sell back up into the grid. Yeah. So I, I've seen, um, I guess I, I've seen other companies um, try to utilize this excess power in different ways. Um, what, I, I mean, what makes, I don't know, maybe um, trying to formulate this question here. Are there going to be incentives in place or is that a possibility? Uh, meaning um, rebates for rural electric um, installations. I mean, I know that in the past and just personal history, we installed a ground loop geothermal system in a home and uh, the rural electric company reimbursed some of our expense. Do you, are you aware of any of those sorts of programs? Oh yeah, they're tax credits and have been tax credits for solar uh, for quite a while, federal tax credits. And the Biden administration is planning to beef those up. 
by the way, we'll, um, for Tesla vehicles, uh, we think for, for all electric vehicles, there'll be a $7,500 to $10,000 tax credit um, starting next year. So if you're, if you're on the fence, wait until January 1, uh, because we probably will have a, a, for the Tesla cars, we probably will have a, a, a generous tax credit. And probably it will be more for the solar roofs because yeah. that, that is the challenge, the financial challenge, because you're putting something on your roof that's generating your electrical needs, it's always going to cost more than just putting a, a meter on, on the side of your house and drawing that energy from the utility company. Yeah. So what else about Tesla have we left uncovered? Well, there are two things. See, it just keeps on coming and that's, that's part of my enthusiasm. So when they developed the Model 3, they developed an HVAC system, a heat pump system that was uniquely uh, geared towards the car. Um, Teslas do not have uh, a drivetrain, so they, don't, they could not have belts that drive the typical uh, HVAC system and cooling system for, for a vehicle. So they developed a an incredibly efficient heat pump system that um, whenever you hear uh, Elon Musk sneaking some information about it, you see a glimmer in his eyes because he knows that they have the technology to make HVAC about 40% more efficient than it currently is, uh, if not more. So. Mm -hmm. There's 40% of the total energy use in the world, coupled with 25%. Um, and in order to make solar more efficient, you need to make your usage more efficient. And that's one thing that we really haven't seen much of yet is energy efficient appliances. Appliances, washers, dryers, dishwashers, they really have not gone through a major change in probably since World War II. Um, so we're about to see that happening, although I don't hear much about it. Um, and, and I'm sure Tesla will, will pursue that. Um, reportedly, they are, they're working on a new tire design. That's something else that has not been um, updated uh, since the war. Because now you're going to have vehicles in a robo-taxi network that are uh, I think the average car now runs about four hours a day and it's going to go up to eight to 12 hours a day with the mm -hmm. robo taxi network and semis that can run 24-7. Uh, so they're looking to revolutionize the tire industry. That's more rumored. Uh, the last thing, and this, this is the last thing that I know of, is that, they're, that they are selling insurance for their mm -hmm. vehicles. California uh, has been, has had it, and uh, they've applied to three other states, Texas is one of them, uh, to get it accepted. Because their full self-driving knows every, they record the data of every driver, they know just how dangerous a driver is and what their driving habits are, and full self-driving reportedly will cut accidents, auto accidents down 98%. We, we will have, and I think it's 30,000 people in the US, I get my stats mixed up, that die every year in auto accidents. So when we go to full self-driving, um, the Tesla will be totally responsible. So this is a short-lived sort of thing as we are transitioning to full self-driving. But since they know how the cars are driven and where they're driven, they know the risks and of every vehicle and they're able to cut the price 30% on selling insurance. So that's, and, and they can set up the insurance right when they're selling the car. So who, who wouldn't, um, wouldn't go for that? So. Yeah. So I know it's, it's a lot, um, but 
that's why I see investing in Tesla is like investing in uh, a dozen companies. Really great information. Hey, I do have one other thing that popped into my mind about Tesla. So they have recently um, constructed or in the process of constructing a facility in Texas, correct? Yes, they have plants in Texas. Um, they've had one in California. They've launched one in Shanghai, and they're building one at about the same uh, place uh, in construction in Berlin. And do you know their overall, um, I guess, corporate strategy when it comes to where production will happen and how and why they've chosen to place them where they have in those countries and in the areas of the U.S.? Well, China is the largest uh, auto market, I believe, certainly EV market. Uh, and they have, a, they have a number of companies uh, that are doing pretty well. So China, I think, was next. Also, not only to supply Southeast Asia, but to su supply Western Europe um, until the Berlin uh, facility is up and running. By the way, they're building both of these facilities, Austin and Berlin, in about one year. Um, the, the pace uh, is amazing. Um, reportedly, they're in discussions in um, India to build a factory there probably not so much vehicles as battery production. Um, and let's see, where else are they talking about it? Uh, well, this will double, more than double capacity uh, this coming online this year or early 2022. So those are the major ones that I hear about. Do you have any idea or any feeling about the proposed impact as far as um, efficiency and less dependence on fossil fuels and, and you know, energy long term as far as what, like, what is the postulation for how um, the world will change with mass adoption to, to the products that Tesla is putting on, on the earth? Well, predictions are that by 2030, um, EVs will be almost 100% of the new of new car sales. Um, and in fact, the only people that will will have gas vehicles or even ve be able to drive a vehicle will be people that purchase very expensive or throw by uh, uh, throwbacks the only term that's coming to me. Uh, older antique vehicles um, or the very expensive vehicles. So most, and, and many people will not even have cars. Uh, they'll have a subscription to the full self-driving um, and just be picked up and, and be part of the robo-taxi network. Um, it, I think it takes uh, the average lifetime of a vehicle, I believe is 14 years. So it takes a while to get all the, uh, all the old ones off the road and the new ones uh, out there. But um, so I don't even remember, I don't remember exactly when they're going to take over, but certainly new car sales uh, by 2030 will almost exclusively be EVs. And there's predictions that a lot of these um, uh, established auto companies will not make it. Uh, in fact, that most of them will not make it because they did not make an investment early enough and Tesla has superseded them uh, in, in their technology and especially full self-driving. So yeah. most will not make it. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to wrap my head around uh, we are in 2021 and by 2030, you know, you drive down certain corridors in just about every city in the U.S. and you see um, a traditional auto, in, you know, uh, manufacturers representation, Chevrolet and um, Ford, as well as, you know, um, 
but all the other brands out there from around the world, right? So you're telling me that they're either going to all switch to production of exclusively electric <laughs> vehicles or they're going to go under. Yes, and, and many of these established automakers have made um, – uh, Mary Barra, I think, is a, the CEO of Ford. Uh, I think it's Ford. Anyway, she she said um, by 2025, I want to say 50 percent. Um, so they're all they are all now saying yes, we're going to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the it's the power of geometric growth. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if Tesla doubles, they were at 100,000 cars this, this past year, um, and they're planning to grow at least 50%. Um, so I forget what the 30-year uh, – I'm not good with numbers. but Yeah, yeah but you can figure that out. So, uh, you know, I still keep going back to this, Mark, and it's – just a little disbelief on my part, but you know, I compare it to my passion, which is Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and I see this trajectory that we're on. And while people may not believe it, I think that you know, in the next 10 years, we're going to make a major shift. But when you talk about taking every single auto on the road, uh, obviously there will be autos that are lasting years after their purchase that are out here now and aren't going to be changed immediately. But Think about that. Every single auto would be converting to EV, as you say, over the next um, couple of decades. The insurance industry, the auto and gas industry, um, you know, gasoline and diesel manufacturing. And, you know, think of the enormity of the impact and the way that um, our, our construct of um, the economy will be broken down. It's the, like what you're saying is not a small um, idea. It's, a, it's big. It's large. How can you, I mean, can you really can justify this, huh? Everything I see, and I, I, I spend an hour or two every morning uh, looking into this, everything I see points to it. They already, okay, if they've already achieved price parity, that was, that was the first hurdle, Rece achieving price parity with gas vehicles. There are, there's no engine, there is no drivetrain. Um, this is uh, one or two or maybe three motors tied to the, uh, to the axes. Um, and so the cost to run them is minuscule compared. There's no oil change. There's no fluids, none of that. Um, so if you, if you can produce a car that's going to provide, uh, going to have less expense for the same price, why would any rational person do otherwise and then you've got you've got some of the the existing um, automakers that for example that somebody to, to be able to drive an electric Mustang Mach E or whatever it is those companies are as long as they can stay in business are going to supply that that Chevy apple pie feeling that people have about those companies uh, so they're going to be able to buy it from somebody else um, and satisfy that need. And, and that's not to say that everybody makes rational decisions, but when you look at the technology in this vehicle, for example, the, the Model S has a, a PS5 gaming system in the vehicle, um, a 24-inch screen in the front and a screen in back for the kids to play um, games, uh, watch Netflix. Uh, so, yeah, I, I have no doubt that the economics have finally gotten to the point. Plus, um, even Elon says, we're not, this does not totally solve the global warming problem, but it comes, 
it gets us closer. So mm -hmm. we've got to move in that direction if we're going to save the planet. So yeah, I, even though it's far-fetched, um, I mean, we all know that fossil fuels can't last forever. They've got to run out sometime. Um, so uh, everything that I see convinces me. And and I'm, I was late to investing in my retirement. So I'm, my hope is that I'm going to be able to play catch up. I, I, from what I read, I believe that Tesla will 10x in another five to 10 years, and they've already done 7x uh, in the past year. So they've got, and when they started, they, they've already done a five to one split. So the shares that I started buying at 700 a share are now worth 3,500 a share. Um, and, and now it's still selling at 700 pre post split. Mm. There's a lot to go there too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, we are, uh, close to an hour in here. Um, I'm not sure we've reserved enough time to dive into Neuralink and the boring company and SpaceX. It's been a really rich and full conversation. Yeah, I don't think we ought to go try to go any further. I think Tesla's Tesla's enough. Um, Maybe we'll do this again as well. There you go, because we certainly want to do an, another cryptocurrency uh, podcast for sure. Well, you know, uh, everything Elon Musk is fascinating, and I appreciate that you're spending a lot of your time um, understanding the technology and the shift and the change that we as humans can make to preserve our planet and preserve, you know, uh, a, a wonderful way of life. And, and that's the goal, right? Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for reversing roles with me and, um, and probing me on Tesla. Uh, I really appreciate you being with us again and and doing this okay. um so let me just uh let people know if they want to find out more about thrive co-living communities mm -hmm. um please go to the website thrive co-living communities.org uh, you can support us on patreon and we're we have several other ways that you can contribute uh if you'd like and we'll we'll have that in the show notes we uh, can also be found on all of the regular pod, audio podcast stations under the same name. So wherever you listen to podcasts, look us up there uh, for the audio version. Uh, you probably found us on YouTube. So we're, we're there every other week. And take a look at the site. Uh, all of our older podcasts are, uh, including Paula's on cryptocurrency, are there uh, at the website in the podcast section and subscribe on YouTube and also on the website. Okay. I, I feel like I've spouted a lot and I, I thank you for hosting that. Excellent. Excellent uh, topic. And thank you for your research. All right. See you next, next time, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of the thrive co-living communities YouTube podcast. To learn more about our mission and how you can support our vision of creating co-living communities worldwide, please visit us at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. To receive advanced viewings of our podcast and other exclusive content, find us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash thrivecolivingcommunities. You can also learn more ways to support our mission in the show notes below. Amazon Smile, GoFundMe, Kroger, and our own Thrive Gear store, where you can buy t-shirts, hats, and many other items. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.